I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby here with Gael Garcia Bernal, who stars as Cassandro. The movie's currently streaming on Amazon Prime. And Gael, it, as after as I was watching the film, one of the things that I thought was so interesting was that there is Saul, the character, and there is Cassandro, the character that he embodies. And I'm curious, did you see them as two different entities in your approach to playing them, or did you see them as two parts of the same coin? Yeah. They're there, yeah, they're definitely. They're they're two different uh, characters in a way, but it's um, at the end we are complete uh, multitudes, you know. <laughs> I mean, like uh, we 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 also contain different characters and uh, very contradictory characters as well, and um, and we can, you know, we we what Cassandra, what Saul did was actually play another character in order in order to find himself in a way, in order to liberate something, in order to find and, and look for his father, you know? And and uh and I mean if we look at it from from the you know from um, if we step aside a little bit we can see that very much clearly, you know, but but if we're inside, well it is such a storm that uh it is never we never know why we embody other characters in order to find something about ourselves or find something who we'd want to be as well because um you know it's it's i think it's a little bit of a fallacy to 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 say like uh i know who i am you know because it's like uh, who i am is changing all the time you know and and uh, and like i've never played myself i've never interpreted myself a guy from guadalajara that is called gael like i've never done that so it is uh, what Saul does is in the nature of what we as actors do as well, and uh, and is that that sublimation, that kind of catharsis that he reaches is the same one that kind of we reach as well when performing another character. So yes, I see them as a, as a, as different characters in a way, but at the same time, uh, you know, they are from the same family in a way, <laughs> and uh, and that's where you know the, the the started to play with that it was kind of like you, you just have to lose control uh, i guess that's a great definition to to see what i mean we you you can think about many things but ultimately when you're about to perform a character you just have to lose control and just let yourself go well in in that losing control it, did that come into play particularly in like the the the, the wrestling scenes themselves where you know Cassandro is is really going through so much and still having this persona is is that kind of letting go was that part of that the, the filming of those scenes yeah well you know in a way I mean it's it's uh losing control of what the film what the lens is cap is you know is getting because you have to lose control in the sense of being there and just living what's happening and listening you know and uh and trying out things and uh, creating accidents and uh and being there ready to 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 be there when the accident occurs you know uh so so it is and during the, the during the wrestling well there is a lot of um stuff that we rehearsed and that we prepared for you know physically and everything but it is different when you're performing it you no know? because it becomes something else there is some other place that you reach uh so yes it was it, it was incredible and it was amazing to 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 play this character and to be able to have those pathways you know first the, the pathway of um of the of the physicality you know like gaining weight getting stronger flexible more acrobatic and then training wrestling which was really hard and very hurtful you know sometimes and uh, and complicated but fun as well as hell you know it was the most fun thing i've ever done i think physically it was really just great to to play that because it, it is a sport that you also have to perform as well. You know, you have to kind of like give a good spectacle. So that was that was fantastic. Then putting on the 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 costume, you know, uh, which is you know gives so much. You know, so those two elements, the the costume and and the 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 physicality of the character, the wrestling, and also the pluma, which in in uh, in queer slang in Spanish it it's called a uh, pluma. We call it pluma. It's a um, like the feather you know the the openness <laughs> of the character you know the you know the 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 el divo de la lucha libre the you know uh, so it was that was very fun to do also and then to play and it's such a privilege to be able to, to do that 
Well, and you know, you talk about this 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 whole idea of you know Saul kind of breaks free, uh, but it, a lot of his struggle throughout the film is him, you know, kind of looking for that acceptance. He doesn't get it from his father. You know, he certainly has it from his mother. But there was even the sense that the mother is kind of like. You know, there, there's a there's a hesitancy there, and then in the relationship with with uh, Gerardo Raúl Castillo's character, uh, what do you think is the ultimate thing that defines Saul? What is what do you think? What did you come to in terms of what is the center of him? Hmm. Well, obviously, it is very unfair to to you know put to kind of like put a few words to describe someone's complexity no i mean uh, but uh but i would say that okay so saul was a very strong wrestler was an incredibly strong wrestler passionate and very dedicated and very very uh, uh you know very uh, faithful to the sport you know very ethical as well with the, with the codes of the sport you know i mean he's a teacher of of uh, of wrestling as well so uh, so that to begin with you know he he's a true professional in that sense and uh, he didn't get an acceptance in terms of how you know how he wanted to be perceived as a wrestler, which is a struggle that all wrestlers have. You know, there is like some wrestlers, even the most successful ones at the beginning, they didn't find their character. You know, it's like a bit like playing the clown. You know, like you don't you don't find your clown still. You know, and and uh, El Santo, for example, played a few characters before uh, becoming El Santo. You know, and become and hitting it big time. You know, so it's like. Uh, they try out different different things, no. So so Cassandro had that kind of like that struggle and that passionate kind of angle. But also Cassandro is an archetype of our of men of our generation as well, which hopefully is the last generation of um, of parents that uh, that were absent, not not parents uh, of uh, the father, no, of the absence of the father, no. Uh, uh, and I'm saying hopefully because what I feel now times have changed a lot and, and now parents are uh, fathers are more present and, and they at least me and, and all my friends and all the people I see like we are fathers that want to be very close to our kids no uh, but yeah I think I think Cassandro uh, is is that the archetype of that generation of that that I belong to as well of of the fathers that kind of sort of you know were were more absent you know and and um, and also that that Cassandra has to go through has to go through certain pathways in that you know confronting it but also accepting it and getting actually kind of like uh, ultimately uh, acceptance being like okay I I see the good side on this absence I wish it wouldn't have been like that but I see the good side because then I I, I didn't have to inherit those restraints and those kind of like. Uh, uh, the, the, that that very conservative point of view that the father had and, and, and everything. Yeah, there's that great scene towards the end of the film where you know Cassandra's sitting opposite his father, and you say to him, "You know, I needed you once, but I don't need you now." Yeah, which I thought yeah. was just such a such a touching thing. What do you think he had found uh, in his life at that point that that allowed him to heal? Uh, clarity clarity and um and maybe it seems you know from far away it seems very simple but when you look at it in the inside then it's like uh it's complicated to get to that point of clarity you know where you have just very few words to say you know and i think that's what cassandro uh, that's where he arrived uh, and that's yeah i'm i'm glad you mentioned that line because i was the one that kind of came up with that line <laughs> like like i i was the one that kind of said like i think this is what he has to say to his father yeah yeah so thank you thank you for mentioning and thank you for allowing me to say it because i yeah it's uh it's nice to 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 be, i think i think it's that simple thing you know yeah yeah what at the heart of the film it is a film that has so much heart it doesn't portray cassandra as flawless it but it portrays him as a whole human being worthy of compassion and i feel like that's something that's missing from a lot of 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 films and particularly biopics, was that something that was important to show the complexity of the man and still have compassion at the heart of it? Of course, of course, to show kind of the contradictions and, and the 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 whole you know just the scope of this 
of this creation also of Cassandra, because obviously there's many things that it's not his real life, you know, and, and especially with the father, for example, he's not his relationship, his re real father, you know, is not, is not like the, <laughs> the one in the character, not like the, in the film. Uh, they're actually very close and uh, I'm sure they went through many things, but they kind of made up, you know, and, and they're, they're very close. And, uh, and so, so it is, uh, no, the, there's many things that we took a lot of, obviously, uh, not, not even creative freedom. It was part of the whole thing. Like we're going to make a version of Cassandro that encompasses different, you know, uh, the different storyline in a way. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was important to to have that and to and to portray as well the the um, the life of the border as well, uh, because seldom is talked about, you know. But it's important to to mention that kind of also that duality that exists there, you know, the people that are born and live in the border uh, between the United States and Mexico. It is complicated, you know. Every day they have to ignore that stupid wall that exists there you know they have to kind of like um completely you know sort of overcome it mentally spiritually because if you look at it from a rational and a, and a kind of a, a you know a, just a clear point of view you all the time you would be asking what is this stupid wall doing here <laughs> you know what is this why, why is it here uh, so so they have to transcend that and that creates an interesting culture as well, um, an interesting culture of community, an interesting culture that that it's neither Mexico nor the United States. It's a whole world of its own, and and, uh, it's and just we humanity. Wanted, with that, we wanted it's to. Just, it's that. just humanity. It's just human beings. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't always see it that way. You know, people don't always look at things that way. They look at things in very binary terms, instead of seeing the whole complexity and the commonality of the human experience, which I think is one of the things that this film does so well. No, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm glad that, 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 I mean, I hope that that's something that uh, people take on as well while was watching the film, you know, it is uh, the life at the border because it is, it is a very special, special place. The people there are incredible, are, are amazing. And we, I mean, I guess what we've normalized is the is that wall, you know, we, uh, we've normalized it. Uh, perhaps it's more normalized from the United States than from Mexico, but it's a, uh, it's uh, it's completely normalized. It's like uh, like oh, it's there, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, when when you look at the Chinese Great Wall, you know, it's like you look at the ridiculousness of what that building sort of. How can you divide life? It's impossible, you know. It's very complicated. So, and and it always leads to trouble. So, yeah. Um, I'm just from from a purely just an acting perspective, um, the physicality of this role is. You talked about it uh, before, but I mean, have you ever done anything this physical in a film before? And was the tr what was the training like to to get into that? Yeah, well, I I did um, I guess uh, you know a film like Motorcycle Diaries was a very 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 uh, you know it took a lot of of uh, uh, physical condition as well you know that uh, to endure the cold the heat the, that 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 the motorcycle thing you know and then so that was that one was complicated in that sense but. Um, but this one definitely full on was like one of the most difficult ones because come on, I mean, it's, it's wrestling, it's proper lucha libre. So I had to learn how to fall, for example, you know, and learning how to fall is is, is a very good thing to learn in life, uh, not only physically, but, uh, you know, in all senses. Uh, and uh, and and so I had to 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 play that and to to train that. Uh, with the wrestlers uh, so basically I mean it was like six months before that I started to gain weight you know and started to put on muscle like um, and flexibility you know with uh, a lot of exercises not no no weights no nothing like that but just mainly you know just calisthenics and kind of like getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger I was very strong I must say uh, and then two two months before starting to shoot the film uh, started to do a proper full-on training of wrestling uh, as well as 
having these workshops with this uh, choreographer that I that I normally work with, and he's fantastic. He helps me a lot in order to find the the, the this what I called before the the pluma, the feather, you know, the kind of like the yeah yeah the the to to get that strength with that flexibility in a way in that performative aspect, you know, and I because it's a great way. To, I love getting into the characters through the body, you know. It's uh it's the best way. So it seems complicated, you know, at the beginning, but then when you start to put the body in it, man, you start to to get a lot of to appropriate a lot the character, you know, and to embody it. And uh, and then came the costume, and then came the hair and the makeup, which was amazing. Maristela Fernandez was the 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 costume designer, and then it's El Peña who's uh, a makeup uh, artist who both of them I work with in many films, you know, and and they did a wonderful job and, and it was incredible because they just gave the little, you know, accents and stuff for everything to come to put together. So they, yeah, they're incredible. I, I hope they get the recognition they deserve because they've been doing a great job for a long, long time. And, and, you know, Roger w Ross Williams, the director is, is, has made some of my favorite documentaries of, of, recent years and and i'm curious you know what what your guys's collaboration was like yeah well he i mean when he mentioned the um, the film uh to me or the idea of the film uh, it was very exciting like all of a sudden okay great somebody uh, i had never thought about doing a lucha libre movie ever you know and um and so when when he kind of talked to me about it i was like wow yes makes sense why haven't i thought of that before or why you know why nobody it has never happened like why why all of a sudden maybe, maybe because it's too close maybe also the one thing that he didn't know uh, is that i was a big fan of lucha libre that i grew up with all these luchadores you know and uh, and in a way like um yeah i reacted very positively uh, immediately and then everything started to put together uh to be put together and and uh and little by little, you know, the film started to to come along, you know, started to amalgam, you know, and uh, and all the collaborators and all the people involved started to to join the project. And I think it was when my my production company got involved that uh, together with Amazon, they were very, very, very kind. And especially Brianna O, who was the, the executive uh, producer for, for this film. Um, they were very, very kind of allowing us to, to with our filmic family, you know, to put this and to go, you know, to make this film uh, happen. Uh, because the film is always, you know, all all films always have a point like they're about to fail, <laughs> no? And uh, every day, like you're you're like, oh my god, we're, we're getting it. But thanks to the filmic family, uh, we were able there to to do it and support uh, Roger and do the film. Well, Gail, I, I just absolutely adore this film. Um, um, and so congratulations. Everybody go to goldderby.com, make your predictions for the upcoming award season, and stay tuned for interviews for more with more contenders. Uh, Gail Garcia Bernal, uh, a real pleasure. Thank you so much. No, the same, man. Thank you so much. Take care.